Hi everyone, um, welcome to the special Kiena recording of the film Cinema Pamir, playing as part of 10th European Union Human Rights Film Days. Uh, we are here with the director of the film, Martin von Krau, who is joining us from Stockholm. Uh, welcome, Martin. Thank you, I'm glad to be here, and thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you for joining. Um, so you're an award-winning photographer and a documentary filmmaker. Your works have been published and exhibited around the world. Um, and mainly you focus on social and humanitarian issues and cover uh, modern conflicts. And Cinema Pamir is your first feature film. Uh, so can you tell us a bit about how did you get involved in filmmaking, uh, making of this film, and what drew you to uh, Kabul, Afghanistan? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, as you mentioned, I've been focusing on, on these topics uh, for 20 years, actually. And this film is a reaction um, due to, to all the work in conflict areas. Um, I found this place, Cinema Pamir, in, in Afghanistan 2008, when I was there on an assignment for Newsweek. And we were just doing a um, suicide bomber topic. Um, and then I, I needed to stay one week after to try to find um, uh, another quirky stories. All conflicts go through, I mean, as you all are aware of, it goes according to a, a certain amount set of, of dramaturgy. Um, you do the, you cover the, the intent, um, the first step of the war, the invasion, and then you go over to human touch stories, and then you need to find these quirky stories. That's how the media works. A good example is the heavy metal band that in Baghdad. You still have the awareness of the of the conflict, but then you, you all the news agencies and, and newspapers are trying to get something else out of the conflict. And I was uh, much better than my than the whole uh, media circus. So I was looking for a, a, a story to do that, and was aiming for cinemas in Kabul. And um, once I started to to shoot i was doing still photography there um stayed for one week and then got back to india where i was based at the time and uh, immediately understand that there's something missing in these pictures there was something that i couldn't touch and i couldn't express and i just realized this is a documentary film just because of of all the the long scenes that was happening um the projectionist lighting up a cigarette on the projector um, small things that was just flavoring the whole scene and I've completely fallen in love with it. And uh, I didn't know how to film, so I decided I need to learn how to film to make this documentary. And uh, step by step I learned assisting, just diving into the, to the trade. And um, slowly the, the story developed into something to try to reach out to the Westerners um due to the circumstances around the world where right wings winds are blowing all over the global phenomenon and uh, people has a hard time to understand what is a refugee why do people leave their countries and um how is it to grow up in a conflict zone here in sweden we have something called the 30 year old war um and are amazed how how long that war took place 30 years that's amazing and how did they live it and and um it was way, way back. And here we have a modern conflict that's been going on for 40 years. And uh, when you read, I mean, when you're reading all the, the numbers um, that the UNHCR reports about 80 million refugees around the world, um, and you get that thrown in your face at the, um, at the news programs, you just, you don't react anymore. It's a, it's a really difficult scene today to try to penetrate the masses um, I usually simplify it that the conflict is, I mean, when you take pictures and report about it, it's either too bloody and nobody wants to look at your pictures or it's a too narrow story and you just get appreciation from, from the people that already know anything about the conflict or it's too beautiful. I mean, that's, that's the most dangerous thing with pictures. Um, they can be beautiful conflict pictures and they can be symbols, which is great, but you often lose the whole context, the story and the victims and everything behind it. Um, so my aim with this film is to try to create um, a hook 
to the Westerners, uh, close connection that what do I do when I um, come back from work? I veg out on the sofa and put on the TV and just um, watch something that I can dream away from. I mean, sci-fi or some rom-com or some series or Netflixing. Um, but in Afghanistan, they go to the cinema to dream away from the war. And that kind of connection, I thought was really interesting and important to try to show them. So for me, this movie is not about Afghanistan. Um, it could be Mogadishu, it could be Baghdad, it could be Yemen, it could be anywhere. And that's also why we're not diving into Afghanistan. We don't drive into uh, the politics. Uh, we don't point out who's to blame for this incident. And we're trying to make it very humane and, and overall. Um, and uh, that's how I got into the film and, and uh, how I struggled for 10 years to complete it. Oh, so it's it's been ten years to complete the film, then. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's um, cool. Yeah, it's uh, three uh, full years, but it from two thousand eight until yeah eighteen nineteen. That's when we finished the movie. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long journey and um, a lot of getting lost into the in the edit room and trying to find out how to build this kind of story because a conflict it's not. I mean, the Hollywood conflicts, they have an ending, and, but the real conflicts, they don't end. It just keeps on going. You just dive into it. And I wanted to show the ordinary life, not to go into the front line or the hospitals. Or I wanted to try to um, lift up the ordinary life and uh, show a, a pizza slice of, of the daily life. So that was really tough um, in the edit room to try to patch it together. And uh, that's what's been the biggest challenge with this film, I would say. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, the film perfectly portrays uh, what you intended to do. Uh, I mean, daily life of these people, which, which is going to be the next question I would like to ask to you, actually. Uh, the film portrays these Afghan characters very well. The people working at uh, Cinema Pamir, regulars of the cinema, ministry officials, film distributors, all of these uh, colorful characters uh, we see in the film. And we witness the everyday life of Afghan people uh, in Kabul, as well as their tragedies uh, they lived, a city that has been affected by the war, poverty, and uh, religious fundamentalism for years. And I was just wondering, what kind of research did you do for finding these characters and finding these uh, cinema Pamir, actually? Well, the big research I did, uh, I, I found it 2008, uh, the cinema itself. And then um, uh, I just, the next year I went back with some prints and gave it to the cinema and just maintained contact with them uh, every time I went down, which was uh, at least one time a year, uh, to just um, make them understand that I really want to do this film, but I'm not ready yet. Um, and then characters were um, some of the great characters in the beginning, 2008. They, uh, uh, some of them died, some of them got fired, some of them left, some other guy um, ran away from the country. Um, so it, it's been l luck. And also as I work with, with the journalism, um, I, uh, I intend to, to stay in the place and, and just observe. So the characters was not selected. Um, it, they just bumped into uh, what I was shooting most of the time. And then of course, Said, who's a crucial um, main character, um, he was working there. But then I, I, he didn't work there back 2008. I, I missed him, he was in between. Um, so I was really lucky that he was working there in the springtime 2015 when I was starting to um, research and went down there to find uh, all the great collaborators um, because it was just me and another Swede that went down and then there's 10 local um, uh, crew members in, in the Afghan, I mean in the film crew because it was crucial. I don't speak Dari or Pashto so for me it was crucial also to work with, with locals and that is super fascinating because Afghanistan has a really vibrant film culture uh, among the youth. Uh, so it was really interesting and fascinating from another perspective to just hang around and, and get to learn the, 
the youth Afghan film community. Uh, and they got something really, I mean, coming up, you should definitely put attention to that side of the world. Um, they are great storytellers and uh, very talented people. So uh, I'm looking forward to see what comes out from Afghanistan in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I was just wondering, a last thing about the film, uh, this is going to be my last question. Um, for almost a century, since its creation, uh, actually, 35 millimeter was one of the most popular photography formats in the world, but now it's almost dead uh, and everything is digitalized at the moment. I was just wondering if Cinema Pamir is still operating. Unfortunately, no. Um, they still, I mean, there's a couple of cinemas still. Unfortunately, they just uh, ruined one cinema uh, in Afghanistan yesterday. Um, but Cinema Premier closed down last fall due to a government decision that they wanted to make it into conference hall. Um, so fortunately today, there's not so many cinemas uh, left in Afghanistan. Um, but uh, the culture is still there. I mean, they are producing much more in-house and, and local films. So um, it's definitely something to look out for. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, do you, I mean, so you are actually following the news about Afghanistan and the culture there, and sometimes maybe you go there. And uh, do you see any difference in terms of perceiving the cinema uh, in years? Because in the film, we see that cinema is perceived as a bad thing sometimes, uh, culturally yeah. in Afghanistan. So do you, do you um, do you see any change? Yes and no. I mean, the countryside is um, is very far behind, as in, in many of these countries, um, with tradition and culture. Uh, but in the cities, it are spreading. So absolutely, there will be a change if it will take five years or ten or twenty years, uh, and then there will always be people that are against something. Uh, you can see that even here in the West. Um, going forward three steps and then backwards two steps so that's that's a uh, um, worldly thing or human thing uh, to go forward and step back but uh, i can definitely see progression there um, even if they're struggling as you can see with the latest attacks in the university um, but that was uh, according to officials uh, isis as we understand it um, so with the local people not think there will be progress and um, they just need the right tools to, to uh, connect everyone and, and uh, move forward. Um, um, so is there anything you would like to add? Um, to our no, I think you covered a lot of good questions um, and I'm really looking forward to, to um, uh, get response from the film and, and to see what uh, I mean, it's important for everybody to see it, I think, uh, even if you're not interested in Afghanistan, it, it uh, touches all conflicts. And uh, I think it's I mean, important to, to show that uh, even, I mean, Muslims are the most hated people in the world or, or culture. Um, so for me, it was also one thing to, um, to uh, let ordinary people see and understand that you're just like us. We are just like them. I mean, we'll have to go to the movie. Sometimes they pray. Sometimes they um, eat snacks or, or discuss the future or a film or whatever. So we're all the same. And, and that's what this film's message is most important for me. Mm -hmm. Martin, thank you very much for sharing this intense and beautiful film with us and uh, joining our Q&A session. And Thank you so much for being, letting me be with you mm -hmm. and enjoy the film. Thank you.